Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Callie. I'm Tracy. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. And, and girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back everyone. It's so nice to see you. Currently we're in the cooler looking at everything we have in here trying to figure out what we need to get picked for today. We've already gone through and got all of the animals taken care of. Farm market is all set up and ready to go. So now we're getting ready to move on to our next job. outstanding in his field yeah look at that look at him he thinks he's special looking good Matt looking good we used a little different mode of transportation this morning we brought the truck out to the fields you haven't seen us do that much this year now there's a good reason for that the side-by-side -side, it is out of commission yeah it's got a flat front tire and we need replacements so we've got them ordered uh, we got two front tires ordered. We'll worry about the back ones later. To get our morning started off, we have to get a few orders taken care of. My dad and Matthew are working on some long hots and jalapenos, and I'm grabbing some habaneros. I'm not grabbing these. These are the ghost chilies. But I just want to show you, look at these in here. Oh yeah, that looks like a uh, spicy time. Well, here we are. I just hope I can find some habaneros. Oh, thank goodness. There's a lot in there. <laughs> There are certain vegetables that I look really forward to picking. Peppers are one of those. Um, hot peppers though, that's a completely different ball game. I think everybody that raises hot peppers enjoys picking them. And that's for a few reasons. One, it's just they always seem to have a beautiful color on them. But probably the biggest reason is just that everybody loves hot peppers. Well, maybe not everybody, but most of the people that we deal with, they tend to love these hot peppers. Now, usually when you're growing hot peppers at home, uh, what's nice about them is the insects and the animals don't tend to bother them too much. Well, that's what we've seen personally. So a lot of times you can grow beautiful hot peppers and it really makes you feel good when you have hot peppers sitting in your field that look like this. So for a lot of people, I think this is one of their favorite things to pick, hot peppers. Um, the hot pepper community can be pretty eccentric, but that's okay. I completely understand it. If people are into hot things, they uh, they want it hot. And these habaneros, they're definitely hot. Thankfully, we had a perfect year for them. A lot of hot, dry weather. That really uh, adds to the heat on these peppers. I don't necessarily like them this hot. Habaneros are a little out of my comfort zone. But if that's your thing, go for it. I know raising them, it can be a little difficult because they take a long time to grow and to mature. But once you're able to harvest, like the way we are right now, man, it sure feels good. There we go. Matthew and I just finished off that basket of habaneros. There's still tons in here. We could pick plenty more baskets, which we will here in the near future. Those orders need to be done right away first thing this morning. So dad is running all that back to the farm so that it can be ready to go for the customers. Matthew and I are gonna be moving the truck over to the plum tomatoes. We're gonna start picking tomatoes.
you know, last year this time we were done picking everything. Yeah, we stopped picking tomatoes a long time ago last year. It was all that rain we got. You remember that? Mm-hmm. That's so bad. It's actually a little dry right now. Probably use some rain. We've been picking our tomatoes enough that I don't think it would split any of the ripe tomatoes. There's not too many there. Stay on top of them like we've been, that wouldn't be a problem at all. So what I've been seeing today is a lot of the tomatoes that were originally green or just turning colors have now matured to a beautiful reddish orange color. So we've been picking quite a bit of tomatoes. Now, even though we've picked quite a bit, there still does seem to be plenty of unripe tomatoes here. So we can come through and pick again, which is always a good sign. It means that the plants are healthy. I mean, I'm not seeing new growth, essentially, but the plants aren't dying. So th those are two things that I'm kind of looking at. I'm not seeing a bunch of new growth, but I'm also not seeing dead plants, so that is good. Uh, if we can continue to harvest tomatoes like this, I know that we're gonna be able to sell them, so I'm gonna be happy if the tomatoes continue to ripe and we don't lose any of them. Now, something else to remember is that the size of the tomatoes are continuing to look good, even though we haven't been receiving much rain. A lot of these green tomatoes, they still will add some size, but if we're not getting rain, that's not too likely. But I think at the moment, we are doing okay. We have some rain forecast for the future. Hopefully it's not too, too much, but I'm happy with what we've been seeing. Dad just said something that I think all of us can agree on. It's been a very long time since we have picked this many tomatoes. Do you remember the last time you picked this many tomatoes? No, I don't. It's been quite a while. I do remember when I was younger picking you know, certain days picking over a hundred baskets a day. And I remember picking over, you know, 800 baskets a week. That's a lot of tomatoes. But do you remember the last time we picked this many tomatoes? Nah, I can remember a time. I don't remember when though. Like it's a bunch of years ago. So I think we all remember picking a lot of tomatoes. It's been burned into our memory, but I, we just can't remember when was the last time it was like this. I do remember one year when we picked a lot of tomatoes, it was $8 for a half bushel. And now we're selling half bushels of canning tomatoes for $14. So times have really changed, uh, not only with the price, but with the varieties of tomatoes that we're raising and with just the overall size of the tomatoes. It's funny how from year to year, prices change for one, but your varieties can change as well. I know these plum tomatoes that we're picking right now is something that we're probably gonna continue to plant in the near future because they just look so stunning you know it's it's wonderful to have tomatoes that look like this so if we can continue to have tomatoes like this year after year we're gonna do that i don't know if it's gonna be possible but i'm gonna hope we can So we started picking right down there. We haven't made much distance throughout the field, but uh, we've gotten a lot of tomatoes. Just look at all the baskets we have lined up along the field. Boy, that is beautiful. It helps when you have everyone here picking, but it helps even more when there's a lot of tomatoes in the row, which we have both right now. Looking back at the rows we've gone through, you don't see many ripe tomatoes, which is a good thing. It means we're kind of picking everything clean, but I wanted to show you these few plum tomatoes that I just grabbed. Look at this one. This is a giant plum tomato. That is a beautiful basket right there. We're gonna get it moved out, but I just really wanted to show you how large the plum tomatoes are that we're picking currently. And I think it's important to show you, if you look down through there, you can see tons of tomatoes, just baskets and baskets of tomatoes. Feels good. We just made it about halfway throughout the field and you can see just by looking down the rows, 
we've got a lot of tomatoes picked. What we're gonna do now is get all this stuff loaded onto the wagon, and then we're gonna take it home. We've gotta run it through our washer, clean them up a little bit, but we're also gonna sort all of them. We're gonna take all the ripe canning tomatoes, put them in baskets, and we're gonna take everything that's not ready to sell yet and put those in other baskets. While we're out here, it would, it would not be good to just overlook our large pumpkins. I mean, let me put my hand on that thing. Big boy. Like we love our large pumpkins, but I mean, this is exciting. Look at this thing. Uh, we're still discussing how we're gonna get it out here because it is very heavy. We have scales, we're gonna be able to weigh it, but should I hug it? As we look down through the rows, there is more large pumpkins. The sad thing is we have one that I think is starting to rot out. This one right here, we're seeing bugs fly out of it occasionally, which is sad, but it is what it is. I mean, you can't have all the perfect large pumpkins. When it does come time to load them up, that will be really fun and it'll be really exciting to get them back to the farm and weighed and I'm just ready to get those pumpkins moved. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Oh, nice wagon full of tomatoes. And you know what's really amazing? Spectacular, some might say, is how many times we've come through and picked these tomatoes. It's truly amazing. And the fact that we are now all finished with that makes me very happy. We're gonna get everything back to the farm. Look at this big helper back here. Are you bagging up noodles? Yeah. Oh, this looks like fun. You like it? Yeah. We had a little bit of an incident with our washer. Uh, the chain that drives everything inside, it has just snapped randomly. So we're working on getting that fixed. But I've got another little job. I've got someone down here that wants to go look at the cows. You wanna go look at the cows? All right, let's go. In here, in here are the baby cows. Wow, what do you think? You can pet them if you want. They'll let you. Sometimes they don't let you pet them. They're just relaxing. They're having a good old time. So what do you think of all the baby cows? I think I want to see the big cows. You think because you've seen the baby cows, you need to see the big cows now? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Good logic. What do you think of the big cows? What are they doing? They're just looking at you. Hey, cows. What are you doing? They're eating grain. There's bugs there. So do you like the big cows more or the baby cows? Baby cows. You like the baby cows? Why do you like the baby cows so much? Because they tickle you. They tickle you? Uh-oh. You want to feed the chickens? Yeah. All right. We can do that. Here's some more grass. Come over this way. Come over here. We're going to open up the gate. Come over and throw the grass in. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, they love it. Get some more and throw it in there. Uh-oh, they're escaping. There you go. Throw it in there. <laughs> they're eating the grass you threw in there. What do you think? You want to feed the other chickens? Throw it in there. There you go, good job. We're back up and running again. We just had a link that broke, so all we had to do was repair the link. Something that's very interesting and of note is we're getting a lot of ripe tomatoes out of this. So a lot of the canning tomatoes that we're getting are gonna be ready to sell immediately, which usually isn't the case. Sometimes we have to let them sit for a little bit. We'll get a few baskets here and there, but today we're gonna have plenty for the customers. It's always a nice thing to have because we just fly through canning tomatoes, especially when they look as nice as they do. Out of what we've already ran through the washer, we've gotten two, four, six, eight, ten baskets of beautiful ripe canning plum. And we've only gotten three baskets that aren't ready to sell yet. Now over here, all these tomatoes at one point were not ready to sell, but they've matured very well. And a lot of these can be moved up. We've got 12 baskets on our wagon that Matthew is taking up to sell. And then here in our storage area, we've got two, four, six, eight, nine baskets that are ready to sell as well. 
We've got a few more that we could look through here. And then all these plum tomatoes over here, they're just a little on the unripe side now. Some of these are from the other day. So if we went through them, we could find more tomatoes. But as of right now, I think we've got plenty to sell and uh, it's nice to see such a good selection down here. Now, something I want to mention the other day, Matthew and I, we actually did our sauce for the year. We did 75 jars for me and him. Now that was a little too much for the both of us. So we gave some away and we shared it with some of our friends, but we did three half bushel and it was a lot of fun. It took a long time. We had to get everything all set up. We had to take care of all tomatoes, clean them, slice them. And we had to slice our onions, slice our peppers. The whole process, I think it took us about five hours to get it all done. Which, uh, I mean, for 75 jars of sauce, uh, I think that's kind of worth it. You know, some people might hear that and think, whoa, well, that's a lot of time. But we did go through quite a bit of tomatoes and it was a lot of fun. I will say it was my first year uh, canning sauce myself. Uh, Matthew is first year for him as well. You know, when you lived at the farmhouse, Grammy just did it for us, but that's a lot to put on Grammy. She had to jar sauce for the family in the farmhouse. So we did our own sauce this year. It, it was a cool experience. If you've never had the opportunity to do it, I'd recommend you try it. Um, it can be a little uh, daunting when you're looking at it at first. You know, there's a lot that goes into it, but once you finally do it, it's very rewarding. And I must say, tastes great too. We followed the old family recipe, tastes just like Grammy's, and I was happy that it did. When I tried it, I was like, oh, perfect. Just the way I wanted it. I was telling them about all the sauce we made. How do you feel about your sauce this year? He's eating an apple. I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's pretty darn good. Yeah, it's tasty. That's the number one important thing. Tasty, just like Grammy's. I'll tell you what, with the side-by-side -side being broken down currently, this truck is getting a lot more action than it normally does. We used to have this old Ford that we'd bring out to the field every single time. We called it the red truck. And then the truck we had before this one was another Chevy. We called that the blue truck. And now we just call this the truck. Yeah, we're only using one truck right now, but we've gone from using trucks to wagons and side-by-sides. We think that's a little better for going out in the fields with, but we are currently out here grabbing some sweet corn. So I'm gonna hop down and get picking. I love it when the corn doesn't want to break off the stock. Ugh, makes you really have to work for it then. That was sarcasm. Some of you may be wondering how the sweet corn pulling has been going. Uh, because of the varieties we had been picking, it hasn't been that bad. But because it's drier, the uh, sweet corn tends to hold onto its ears a little more tighter and it makes it difficult on us while we're pulling. But thankfully the varieties have been kind to us. Hasn't been that bad. While we were picking tomatoes, the girls had called us and let us know that we were completely out of corn. Now it is lunchtime, but we wanted to make sure that we got some corn before we went in and ate. Speaking of lunchtime, nothing wrong with grabbing a little snack while we're out here. Just gotta find a nice ear. Oh, baby, that's nice. Have a little sample. Oh. Mm, that's good. Beautiful day. Alrighty, it's lunchtime here on the farm. It looks like we're having hot sausage. We've got some pierogies and watermelon. Woohoo! So you can see, I was talking about tomatoes. Look what Grammy's got here. Whole bunch of tomatoes. How much is this? Half bushel or two half bushels? So a bushel of tomatoes she's going through. And for those of you that are curious, this right here is the old recipe that we follow. So homemade spaghetti sauce. I'll try and get it on there. We just swap, you, out the canola, yep. swap out the vegetable oil. Yeah, we just swap out the vegetable oil, but there you go.
if anybody was curious. Now, I had talked about them in a recent video, but Daniel and Sadie, uh, they go in detail in making the sauce. We didn't do that. I thought about recording it. I just, uh, it was our first time doing it. I just didn't want to go into it too much, but Daniel and Sadie, they've gone into detail. So if you want to see how they make their sauce, make sure you check out their channel. Link in the description. So, uh, Andrew had to run off this afternoon, so he left the camera with Dad, Daniel, and I, and uh, we were gonna film what we were doing, but we don't normally film things. So we got out here, we started picking up irrigation pipe and got it moved over to our late season coal crops and we're getting it put down and Dad looks at me and goes, hey, weren't we supposed to film this for Andy? And uh, yeah, we absolutely were. So now you're gonna get to watch us lay some irrigation pipe. rain in about any rain no amount to anything we haven't had in about three weeks so this broccoli and cauliflower is just getting ready to start making head and they're not calling for any significant rain for a while so it's important for us to get some water on this cauliflower and this broccoli and this cabbage the boys are laying the pipe this is a uh, four inch pipe or three inch pipe i'm sorry they're laying three inch pipe is this three inch or four inch pipe yeah, we're laying three inch pipe. We have a latch and hook irrigation system. It's important that they get everything hooked together because when you get a lot of pressure on the pipe, if it's not latched properly, sometimes the pipes will move and they'll come apart. And then it's a big mess. When you got water and everything, everything's heavy. It's hard to get it back to where it needs to be. Now these pipes are 40 foot in length. Our sprinklers water 90 feet. So we're gonna water uh, 90 feet of cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. And we will pump water on this uh, for the first time. We'll pump on for about an hour or this afternoon here. And then we will shut it down and let it sit. You don't wanna pump too much water on after you had a lot of dry weather because the water, the ground is hard and it just uh, runs the water off. I actually think we are gonna be short I think you're gonna be good. Just gonna leave it that. Put this yeah, one well, on. Other than we got red cabbage and savoy over there on the other side. All right, so we're out here at our coal crops, our cabbage, our cauliflower, our broccoli, and we just got our blue hose hooked up to it. This blue pipe runs all the way up to our ponds, which are way over there. And from there, we were able to pump water out to our coal crops so that we can water them. We just got the pump started. We're going up to see, make sure everything's working okay. Oh, Matt wants me to jump on the front of the four-wheeler. I'm getting too old for this, but I made it. So we're gonna go and make sure all the sprinklers are running. Oh, I see water flying, so it looks good. So sometimes when you're doing this, you run into trouble with the wind. Ooh, we almost got wet which way the wind's blowing. As you can see, the wind's blowing to the southeast a little bit. So it's not getting all the way out here, but this will build up pressure and we'll shoot out further. Oh, we got one rock block sprinkler down here. So we got one sprinkler out here that's not working. Looks to me like there might be a stone or something in it. We'll see what we can do with it. I'll put you people out here because I don't want to take you in there and get all wet. This is a job you get wet sometimes. Beautiful. Looks good. We have the water running on all of our coal crops now. So that is always a pretty sight once you finally get done doing irrigation to see it all spraying. So we're only gonna let this run for about a half hour or so because it runs better at nighttime when it's dark. You don't you lose any water to evaporation. So that's the plan. Now we have it all set up, we know it works, and now we can run it this evening. So another thing that we forgot to film because we forgot the camera was we dug some potatoes. Danny went down through and dug them. I wish we would have had the camera for that though because as you can see, we got a lot of potatoes here. It really looked cool seeing them coming off of the machine. Man, these are nice. Good red color on them too.
Sorry, we missed picking it all up. But uh, Daniel was supposed to dig up exactly as many baskets as could fit on the wagon. He dug up one too many. We'll forgive him this time, I guess. I don't know what to talk about, Daniel. I'm tired and hot. Daniel was picking up all the most of the potatoes while Dad and I were fussing around with the with the squirt guns playing in the water. Do you see him over there, Daniel? See him running? Is there anything better than that? I don't know, but I could really use water right now. I, I, we're but pumping. Not, not that water. We're pumping some over there. You could have not some that of that water. water. Everybody, you're now with me. Lauren and I had to take the baby somewhere this afternoon, so I was not around. Sorry, I didn't have the camera with me. Right now, we are working on dinner, and then over here we have Callie, who is playing with the babies. What do you think, Callie? Wait, I'm gonna show them your nails. Oh, show them your nails! Wow, very nice. And then the babies are over here relaxing. Lauren is helping Callie with something right now, but she just brought me the dinner she had made for us. Doesn't that look good? And since it's dinner time and I'm doing a little bit of baby watching here, that does mean this is where we're gonna be ending the video today. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time. Buh bye bye